When it comes to arachnids, the spiders are, by a considerable margin, the greatest source of fear among the general populace. But when it comes to actual danger posed to humans, spiders are a far cry from claiming the top spot among arachnids. Even with such notorious members as the Brazilian wandering spiders and the perpetually overweight lazy couch potatoes sometimes known as funnel webs, spiders as a whole pose a more or less negligible risk to human beings. And yes, that still applies here in the land of overrated animals. Instead, in terms of annual human fatalities, the most dangerous arachnids are, by a long shot, the scorpions. The vast majority of scorpion species worldwide are not of medical significance to humans, but the relative few that are have, between them, amassed a pretty hefty body count being responsible for approximately 3,000 annual human fatalities. That's incomparably more deaths in the space of a single year than have been caused by spiders in recorded history. And it doesn't help that many of the most venomous species inhabit poorly developed regions, where seeking adequate medical attention may be a rather arduous task. Being in Australia, I'm hardly in a great position to be talking about deadly scorpions. In a bizarre twist, this country, so famed for its overblown reputation of hosting a menacing multiplicity of murderous monsters, is one of the only continents that is utterly devoid of any scorpions venomous enough to kill a human being. Hormurus, a very familiar face on my local forays, seems to have eschewed practically everything that makes scorpions such a force to be reckoned with overseas. Yet even here in Australia, a place where you can safely assume any scorpion you encounter isn't deadly, one widespread myth that pervades discussions about these animals across the globe has shafted its way into public knowledge, or lack thereof. That myth is, the smaller the scorpion, the deadlier the sting. Like many widely believed misconceptions about, well, practically anything, this myth does at the surface level seem to align with reality, especially when you take a look at some of the biggest scorpions alive. In this instance, Pandanus Imperator, the Emperor Scorpion, is an oft-cited example. It is, without question, a very large scorpion, yet in stark contrast with its foreboding appearance, Pandanus fits the gentle giant archetype to a T. While its enormous claws pack the potential to inflict a substantial pinch, its venom is rather weak. The same applies to the other giants of the scorpion world. The Asian forest scorpions from genera like Heterometrus and Gigantometrus are close relatives of Pandanus, and while their temperaments tend to veer toward the defensive end of the spectrum, their venom is nevertheless little to worry about. And if scorpions as huge and intimidating as the likes of Pandanus Imperator or Gigantometrus Swamidami are armed with such a weak toxin, then surely it must follow that a scorpion's venom potency is inversely correlated with its size. But like many things in biology, or the sciences in general, it's not quite as simple as that. For while the venom of the absolute biggest scorpions is of little medical concern, things start to get somewhat muddier when one takes a look at the bulk of scorpion species alive. There are innumerable species of scorpions that are both very small and practically harmless, a prime example of which being Leocheles australasiae, a smaller relative of the Hormurus I regularly feature in my videos. It scarcely exceeds 3 centimetres in length, yet its sting would very likely be even more benign than that of the giants. The genus Euscorpius is a similar case, all of which are small or at most medium-sized scorpions, and armed with stings that cause extremely mild effects that have been likened to a mosquito bite. Contrarily, and perhaps more importantly, Many of the most dangerous species, while dwarfed by the titans like Gigantometrus, are nevertheless fairly sizeable scorpions. Species from the genera Andratonus and Parabuthus 
both of which have been responsible for human fatalities, can attain some pretty impressive sizes exceeding 10 centimetres in length. Other medically significant genera like Lyurus, Hottentotta and Titius are capable of reaching sizes that could at the very least be described as moderate. But of course there's also plenty of scorpions in the same size range that aren't dangerous in the slightest. So what's the bottom line? The size of a scorpion is practically useless as a predictor of how potent its venom is. And particularly in localities where medically significant and potentially deadly species are present, it'd be prudent to avoid utilising such an unreliable rule of thumb to attempt to ascertain the risk posed by any scorpions you may encounter. But the overall size of the animal isn't the sole metric by which people may attempt to gauge the venom potency of a scorpion. Another common rule of thumb pertains to the relative proportions of the pincers and metasoma, the latter of which is the narrow portion of the body colloquially called the tail, with pincer size being negatively correlated with venom potency and metasoma size positively correlated. So a scorpion with big, hefty pincers and a small tail likely poses low to minimal risk, while a scorpion with narrow pincers and a thick, powerful tail may pack more of a punch. And as a whole, this is a much more reliable predictor of risk than the animal's size alone. However, it's still not perfect. On one end of the spectrum, there are many scorpion species with narrow pincers and a comparatively large metasoma that aren't of much risk to people, if at all. A couple examples of which include the genera Hadrurus and Cercophonius. And on the other end of the spectrum, there is also at least one very noteworthy exception, Hemiscorpius lepturus. This species has all the visual hallmarks of a mildly venomous scorpion robust, powerful pincers, and a relatively small, narrow tail. Yet Hemiscorpius lepturus is one of the deadliest scorpions on the planet, and is responsible for the overwhelming majority of scorpion-related hospitalizations within its range, far outshining the Sympatric Andratonus crassicorda, a species that has the more archetypal appearance one would expect from a medically significant scorpion. The genus Hemiscorpius is admittedly the only major exception I can think of when it comes to assuming scorpions with comparatively large pincers aren't medically significant. So if you're not in the Middle East, which is where this genus occurs, the pincer tail ratio is still likely to be at least somewhat reliable as a risk indicator. But if somewhat reliable isn't good enough for you, then there's really only one option left. And that is familiarising yourself with your local scorpion species. What they are, how to identify them, and of course, what you could expect if you were to be on the receiving end of a sting. Because no rule of thumb or sketchy identification chart is ever going to be as reliable as a proper knowledge of the wildlife around you. For scorpions, and indeed all potentially dangerous animals, a proper education is the ultimate key to a safe and peaceful coexistence. And speaking of sketchy identification charts, feel free to check out this video wherein I correct one of the most commonly circulated ones concerning dangerous Australian spiders. And if you'd like to see more scorpion content, well this video is bound to deliver on that front. Of course, if you enjoy my content, then you are warmly welcome to subscribe. That's about it from me, so thank you for watching, and I shall see you all again next time.